Hi, I'm Caitlin and this is Book Chats and it's the time of year where I get to do my favorite collaboration and that is the Best Picture Readathon, which I co-host with Rebecca from Rebecca Lovato. Rebecca just relaunched her channel. I'm so excited. Rebecca and I met on YouTube, have known each other since the beginning, and we both really love cinema. I have a film studies minor. She actually learned how to make movies, which is not what I did. I just learned how to complain about them. Every year we love watching the Oscars. We love watching what gets nominated for the Oscars. And this tag kind of grew out of that and our love for that. Basically what we do is each year we see who gets nominated for Best Picture and then we write the questions for what was originally a tag and is now a readathon based on those Best Picture nominees. This year for the first time in a long time we have a full 10 nominees. So we have a full 10 questions. You do not have to read all 10 books. Also we're giving you six weeks to read the books that you want to read. Pick the movies you most want to sort of support or like imaginarily vote for and read the prompts for those or read the prompts that you find the most interesting. We are running this readathon from February 1st through March 12th, which is the day that the Oscars broadcast is. We want y'all to be able to make your TBRs and start reading them, but it makes sense to go all the way through to the broadcast because that's when, we're gonna, when we are going to be talking about the Oscars the most. Without further ado, I'm going to go through the questions and I am going to tell you what I think I'm going to be reading for them, although I do reserve the right to change my mind later, both because I am a huge mood reader and because despite the fact that I was writing these questions, I don't actually have books for all of them. So I would love recommendations down below. I'll tell you which ones I need recommendations for. Also at the top here, we talk about these movies and the questions associated with them in alphabetical order, which is also how the Academy announces and presents them because we don't have any favoritism towards anything. It's just how the Academy does it. It's how we do it. It's alphabetical. It should be neutral. Although as someone with a last name that starts with a B, sometimes alphabetical does not feel very neutral. <laughs> but regardless of that, I am going to start off at the top with All Quiet on the Western Front. This is a new German adaptation of a famous German novel. I have read this book. I had to read it in high school. I could talk for 20 or more minutes about this book, the idea of this movie. For this prompt, you should choose either a retelling or a classic. Or if you can find a classic that is a retelling, you know, you could do that too. But it's an or, it is not an and. I have three things that I'm kind of bouncing between for this prompt personally. So just to give you an idea, on my Kindle, I have several classics that I've been intending to read for many years, and I just have not yet. And maybe this is my chance. So the two that I'm thinking about are The House of Seven Gables, which more than 10 years ago, my best friend Jessica told me that she thought I should read it because she thought I would like it. It is, in her opinion, a better Hawthorne novel than The Scarlet Letter, which is what many of us had to read in school. I'm thinking about reading The House of Seven Gables. Alternately, I might read North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Alternately, there are some children's classics that I've been thinking about getting to that I haven't yet. I read Anne of Green Gables for the first time, I think two years ago, and I've thought about continuing on in that series. I don't actually have that here. I literally own every Anne of Green Gables novel from my childhood home and just never read them as a child. If I don't read a classic and I read a retelling instead, I had already checked this out as a thing I might read in February. That is A Blade So Black, which is an Alice in Wonderland retelling, I believe. I have not read Alice in Wonderland. But I am intrigued by this book. I've been intrigued by it since it was released, and so I'm thinking about it. Maybe. We shall see. Also, I will just say here, reading the novel All Quiet on the Western Front would be a super legitimate choice here. I actually do recommend the book. It is bleak, but intentionally, I think it's doing what it's supposed to. For number two, the next movie that was nominated for Best Picture is Avatar The Way of Water, and I shot myself in the foot, y'all, with this question. We wanted to pick something that would be, like, expansive enough to easily pick a book for and kind of capture some of what makes Avatar so enchanting to people. And that really is this idea that it's sort of like a sci-fi expansive created world. So. Rebecca suggested, why don't we just have people pick a sci-fi? Thinking to myself, like, yeah, sci-fi is a great idea. I have sci-fi on my shelf I need to read. And I was like, well, what if we don't just say sci-fi generally? What if we specifically say it has to be a sci-fi that's set on a non-Earth planet? Now, this can be like Mars or another like real planet in our solar system or outside of our solar system. Or it can be, you know, a made up planet that we don't know have or have discovered yet. But by doing that, 
I eliminated every unwrapped sci-fi book on my shelf because none of them are set on other planets. I went through my TBR on the story graph and I found one book, Assassin's Orbit. I don't know a ton about this book, but obviously I added it to my TBR at some point because I heard good things, probably on Twitter. And then as I was reading the descriptions, it definitely is not set on Earth, so it qualifies. Two thumbs up for me. <laughs> the third nominated film is Banshees of Incharnan, which is a film about two friends in Ireland during the Troubles who were friends, but during the course of the movie are not friends and are so much not friends that I think, I have not watched it yet, but I really want to. I think one of them wants to murder the other one or is otherwise like, it's not that they just drifted apart. They are enemies now. I have over the last few years sort of been unofficially collecting books on my TBR and on my, and that I've read that are about friendship breakups because I think it's sort of an under examined part of our culture. The one that I have not read yet that is definitely on my TBR is We Used to Be Friends by Amy Spaulding. Gotta get it from the library, but that I am planning to read for this prompt. The fourth movie nominated this year was Elvis, which I joked with Rebecca that we should make the prompt uh, a book that your parents love because I cannot tell you the number of times I've mentioned this film and someone has told me, oh, my parents loved that. <laughs> But we didn't do that because it's too close to something we picked last year. Instead, I was thinking about how y'all are all reading Spare right now, and so we're throwing you a bone. Just pick a celebrity biography or memoir, and that's what you should read for Elvis. I personally have a couple options, but I don't know what I'll be able to get in time. I don't have any celebrity memoirs on red on my shelves, but I am on the very, very long hold list for Jeanette McCurdy's I'm Glad My Mom Died huge memoir hit of last year. If I get that in time, I will read it, but I'm like 600 <laughs> on the holds list. My backup is to read the follow-up to John Lewis's original graphic memoir, March, books one, two, and three, which is Run, and I think this is about him sort of transitioning to running for political office. I am planning to check out Run, book one, from my library and read that in the next six weeks. The next movie on this list is actually the first of them that I have seen by this point, although I do it to intend to watch several more of them. And that is Everything Everywhere All at Once. I loved this movie, y'all. It has a lot going on. There's a lot about it. But I wasn't going to make you a question that was like, read a book about doing your taxes, okay? I was not going to do that to y'all. What we went with instead is the fact that this film has two directors. They're both named Daniel, <laughs> so they kind of colloquially go by the Daniels. Both of them were nominated for Best Director as well, and that's only the fifth time that like co-directors have been nominated for Best Director, so it is actually a really big deal. We decided to go with choosing a book that has two or more, I guess, if you want, authors. I think that what I'm going to read for this is the second Kate Daniels book. Alona Andrews seems like it is only one author, but it is actually a husband and wife pair that write together. I have loved some of their series. I have read several of the Kate Daniels books in the past, and I am rereading them with Mari from My Name is Marinez's Discord reading along group. So I believe that is what I'll end up reading for this prompt. Next is The Fablemans, which is a Steven Spielberg film that is semi-autobiographical, kind of about a boy who is learning how to love filmmaking. But while he's doing that, he's also like changing how he looks and sees the world and seeing new kind of things in his life and his family's life. I have seen this movie. I really enjoyed it. And, and it is about a lot of things. For this, what makes the most sense in the context of a readathon is that you should choose a book by your favorite author, or I try to always give people an out because not everyone has a favorite author or book or genre. So you can also just choose a book by a really prolific author because Steven Spielberg has made so many films, y'all, over time. And so what I am picking for this is actually, I do have a favorite author, which is so rare. I do not have a favorite book, but I do have a favorite author. And I have been intending for years to reread the first book in her only trilogy and then actually complete the trilogy because it's the only part of her like work that I haven't finished. So the first book is Finnegan of the Rock and I do need to reread it because it's been about 10 years since I did. And then the second book is Freud of the Exiles. And then if I'm very ambitious, maybe I will finish out the trilogy with Quintana Abcharn. Next is Tar, which is a Todd Fields film. 
he has had great success getting his films awards recognition. This one is, as best I know, a fictional biography of a conductor, like a fictional famous conductor. But I've also heard that a lot of things happen and it's better to not really know going in everything that's going to happen in this movie. So I am planning to try to catch it this weekend. For this prompt, what we want you to do is read a book you don't really know anything about. This might be a book that you intentionally do not know a lot about. I know a lot of people who really read a lot of thrillers and mysteries try not to read too much and read jacket flap copy because they don't want to know. Or it could be a book that you just don't know a lot about. This is going to be totally personal to you, but for me what I'm picking is Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead. I got really into Colson Whitehead after reading The Nickel Boys two years ago and then last year finally picking up Underground Railroad. I think that Colson Whitehead for me is really worth all the hype and I heard from a former co-worker that this one was really good, but I don't actually know anything about it beyond that Colson Whitehead wrote it and it's supposed to be great. Next, Top Gun Maverick, <laughs> which I have also seen, thought about a couple prompts from this, but one of the things that's interesting to me specifically about Top Gun Maverick that is not necessarily present in every blockbuster and is not present really in the original Top Gun movie is that there are distinctly casts that parts of the cast that are two separate generations that are still really important to the plot. So obviously there's Tom Cruise and his lump and dress and all of his buddies from the first film. And then there is the other actor who plays Goose's son. And he obviously is a huge part of this film. And then he has his own little cast of like fellow recruits for this mission. And so we would love you to pick a book that has multiple generations that are really an important part of the book or important characters in the book. This could be a book that like goes over multiple generations, maybe like a multi-generational family saga, or it could just have characters interacting with each other from multiple generations at once. What I've picked, I think qualifies, but I'm not 100% sure because this is one I actually do not know a lot about. And that is A Visit from the Goon Squad by Jennifer Egan. There we go. A Visit from the Goon Squad by Jennifer Egan. I picked this up from a little free library last year and I figure I should read it or DNF it and get it out of my house. It is kind of short stories that go through a lot of different characters, so I'm pretty sure this qualifies. Cross your fingers for me. We're down to the last two and the, the only big surprise for me on this list when I saw it in terms of I had not heard of this movie, which I know sounds very arrogant, but I do follow a lot of media trying to figure out who's going to be nominated in part because of this readathon and in part because I am a nerd. It is Triangle of Sadness, which I kind of jokingly have called this like the true eat the rich film of 2022. We weren't really going to dig super deeply into the themes of this movie that neither Rebecca nor I has seen and many of y'all probably haven't seen either. Instead we chose to make the prompt that you should pick a disaster or survival book because this movie involves a shipwreck and a bunch of rich people being stuck on an island after that shipwreck. It is not... It is not Gilligan's Island, y'all! <laughs> I know that there are a ton of really beloved disaster or survival books out there and a ton of things to pick from, but this is an area where I just did not, in my research of what was on my shelf and in remembering what I had, I could not think of something that was on my shelves or TBRs that qualified. Maybe I just missed something obvious, but I would love if y'all could actually recommend down me, to me below in the comments what I should read for this prompt, a disaster or survival book. That would be great. Please let me know down below. And then finishing out the last movie is actually the one prompt that I have the most books for and have not decided yet. And that is Women Talking. This is a really interesting adaptation of a book that is close, supposed to be quite good, but I have not read yet. The story behind this prompt is that my, me and this movie ha have a story. I obviously am very interested in cinema. I'm interested in women in cinema, I'm interested in female directors, actors, actresses, below the line, all of these. And this is a movie called Women Talking. It has a female director and is an almost completely female cast. It is centering the lives and concerns and interests of women. You think it would be right up my alley. But then I was like, oh, I don't know. It seems like kind of heavy subject matter. And then I saw the trailer and I was like, oh, but it seems really good too. But then every time I've thought about seeing it in cinemas, I just think about what it's about and I'm not sure I'm ready. And that is, this is a movie where a group of women who are in sort of a very insular religious group, these women are meeting to talk about what they're going to do about the fact that they have been attacked repeatedly 
in in the nights by men and they have been assaulted and raped by men and what are they going to do and how are they going to do that thing in the full knowledge of sort of their religion and beliefs and uh, kind of if you've seen the trailer they are deciding between running fighting back or doing nothing just think about that just think every, every time i think about going to watch that in theaters even though the, the reviews are glowing pe so many people talk about how it's not just trauma porn they intentionally do not show the attacks on the women in the movie they intentionally focus it on the women the women have a variety of different beliefs about what they should do a variety of different reactions of what has happened to them everything about this movie makes me think i will love it but i have just i've been avoiding it so all of that to say for women talking please choose a book that you have been avoiding on your shelf because you are not sure if you're ready for that book you're not sure you're pretty sure you're going to like it but you don't know if you're ready for the subject material you don't know if you're ready for the length you don't know if you're ready just for all of the emotions that are going to be coming for that with that book but i'm really going with books that i personally have been avoiding because of subject material one of them is a good find time for the truth race in minnesota which is a collection of essays about about race in minnesota from non-white minnesotans one of them is a cross and the lynching tree which is about how christianity has been used by white christians to justify racism slavery subjugation of non-white people and why that is bad. One of them is on my shelf, and I just didn't bring it over here, but is the making the making of biblical womanhood by Beth something. Yeah, I don't know if I even need to explain why that one is one I've been avoiding because I just think that reading it is going to be like a lot. A lot is going to emotionally. So those are the three books I'm kind of thinking about right now. But honestly, there's a whole chunk of my TBR that I've just been avoiding because it is. I don't feel ready to read it right now. So. The next six weeks are when I'm going to be ready to read some of those books. Please consider joining this readathon. I know that you're probably trying to read books for content that you're making. You're probably trying to read books for Valentine's Day. But please consider if even one of these prompts reaches out to you, interests you, sparks an idea in your mind, please consider reading at least one book for this readathon. And secondly, if you do participate in this readathon, please let me or Rebecca know. We would love if y'all would participate. We always participate and we always have fun and we have fun collaborating together. And that's why we keep making this video year after year. It would just make me really happy to know other people are participating too. So thank you so much for watching and let me know down below if you've seen any of these movies, if you're looking forward to seeing any of these movies and if you have a disaster or survival book that I should read. Thanks. Bye.